Welcome to the show. Many thanks uh, for staying with us. Health Minister Kukwajima Menu says the health care, uh, care delivery will be boosted with the operationalization of the 307 ambulances to each of the 275 constituencies in the country. He called on the health facilities in the country to ensure that these ambulances are judiciously used for effective emergency response services. Ms. Ajima Menu was speaking at the commissioning of the ambulances by the government at the Black Star Square a few hours ago. Way for easy operationalization of these ambulances. We also do know that some constituencies are a bit behind in terms of their preparedness in receiving these ambulances. As these ambulances are going to be deployed today, I'll entreat all my colleague MPs, regional ministers, and metropolitan municipal and district chief executives to continue to collaborate with the National Ambulance Service, especially in places where the infrastructure is not ready to identify suitable places from where to operate until such times that the necessary facilities are made available. Any support that can be provided by you to the National Ambulance Service is more than welcome. And I'm aware that some of my colleagues MPs have actually provided some ambulances to their constituencies. We are going to add these to what we have done, but I will still entreat you to continue to give the support that we have been given in the past. I would like to call on the Director General of Ghana Health Service, the CEOs of the teaching hospitals, the regional directors of health services, as well as heads of all Ministry of Health agencies to cooperate and collaborate with the National Ambulance Service as they carry out their duties in providing pre-hospital care services for the country so that together we can all assist in building a comprehensive, effective and efficient emergency response system for our country. Your Excellencies, I would like to use this opportunity to also appeal to transport organizations such as the Ghana Road Transport Union, the Progressive Transport Owners Association and other transport associations to cooperate with the National Ambulance Service and other emergency services so that they assist them to gain easy access to the roads in the course of their duties. And I'm sure their cooperation will go a long way to save many lives. On this note, Your Excellencies, I wish to end my speech. And once again, Mr. President, thank you and the Vice President for your personal commitment in ensuring that this laudable project became a success. Mr. President, I want to assure you that tonight I will sleep. <laughs> And I'll beg for permission to be late a little bit tomorrow morning. <laughs> Mr. President, since after the deployment of the drones, or even during the deployment of the drones, I took a lot of passion from Parliament to radio stations to TV stations to several other media platforms. Now we don't have ambulances, and we are deploying drones to fly blood and essential medicines. And I kept on telling people and the nation that the president is committing to deliver on his promises and he will so do. So the president is committing and he has delivered today. But how are they going to work? Well, let's hear from the CEO of the ambulance service, Dr. Nuhu Zakaria. I'd like to thank you once again, Mr. President, for fulfilling your promise to the nation and for providing the single biggest logistical support to the National Ambulance Service in its 60 years of existence. Before I end my speech, Your Excellency, I would like to mention that our emergency medical technicians will be demonstrating to you through a simulation exercise the type of care that they provide to patients and activities that take place in the pre-hospital setting. We wish you God's continuous guidance and protection in all your undertakings. God bless you, Your Excellency, and your government. God bless Madagascar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Zakaria, Chief Executive of the National Ambulance Service. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
the Minister responsible for the Ministry of Special Development Initiatives, the Honourable Mavis Hawa Kumsil. Let's receive her with a round of applause. In the studio, I have Ayana Musa. He's from the Regional Administration of the West North, uh, Western North Region. So we'll have a, a, a deeper conversation about the uh, ambulances, the distribution of those ambulances. Mr. Musa, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. So we've seen it. I mean, we've seen all the fanfare, and uh, we'll talk about the drama later and whether or not what it actually does. But first of all, tell us what, in your opinion, this distribution means to the ambulance service. Um, just as the minister did mention, he said he will sleep today. Mm -hmm. I am happy but uh, hungry with um, a lot of prank calls. Okay. In fact, the number of prank calls that came in today were overwhelming. And I think uh, I'll just use this platform to plead with the public. Um, mm. to okay, so now that you mentioned the prank calls, maybe we can deal with that specifically and then we'll come back to my question. Now, the, he's talking about prank calls because today at the, uh, at the commissioning, President Kufado announced a merged emergency line. Now, in, essentially, initially we'll have 18555 for the police, we'll have 191 for um, uh, what's the, the, what's the ambulance service, but now we have 122, which is a merged emergency number for every emergency. The president announced it as well. And you hear from the president shortly. But that announcement seemed to have attracted a lot of prank calls so this number was active already this afternoon yes. it, it, has it been active all this while or was it just active when the president announced it it was in the trial process it was in the trial process so, yes okay but it was just activated when the okay the because this was on tv and it was it was uh, it was open to everybody else so as soon as the president mentioned the number everybody started calling people tried, wanted to know if actually it was working and they should be rest assured that the system is working. <laughs> I, I must be very honest with you. I felt the temptation to call myself because I wanted to be sure that it's working. So now you're saying to the people, stop calling because it's working. It's working. Now, what you do with prank calls is that if you continue doing the prank calls and you actually have an emergency, it becomes difficult because those who are picking up these calls get tired and sometimes they may miss out on the, on the prank calls. So this is how it's going to work. But with the one two two, are, uh, are the calls coming to the ambulance service alone? It's a central uh, process. Okay. When the call comes in, it uh, goes to all agencies. Now, the appropriate agency that uh, the call is meant for would now be directed to I mean, okay. action on that. So when I call one two two, what do I? What happens? Can you take us through the process? When you call one two two, it goes to I mean, the national call center where you have the various institutions, mm -hmm. the police, the national security, fire service, and mm -hmm. the national ambulance mm -hmm. service one. Now, the, when they pick the call, when you realize it's a medical issue, it will be directed to the ambulance mm -hmm. control center, mm -hmm. and they will now expedite action on it. I see. In the coming days, I'm sure we'll see how it works. But back to my question about what this particular distribution today um, I have no idea how long you've been in the system, but with the, with the distribution of these ambulances, with all the calls that came, the bashing like the minister was saying that the government got for not distribution, distributing these, what does today's um, um, action mean to those of you who work within the service? Yes, um, uh, let me see. it's just one component of it. You, uh, you heard the minister say um, the MMDs should also do their part. Um, the ambulances are going to the constituencies, mm. and uh, so obviously there should be a working environment. You can't work with the ambulance alone. Mm -hmm. We have personnel. Okay. This personnel needs some working environment. Obviously, when they are tired, if you are stressed, mm -hmm. you cannot uh, discharge your duties. So we need this um, in the working environment, okay. and I think that is what the Honourable Minister was calling on the MMDH. To, to do. do. Let's talk about this working environment. What exactly does it look like? Give us a mental picture. The mental picture is that this is a studio. This is an environment. This mm -hmm. is your office. Mm -hmm. So the ambulance service also need a working environment like offices. Okay. Then offices at the hospitals? 
wherever they will be established. So, so I, I, because I mean, I, this is not my area, so I'm trying to understand this so that my viewers can also understand. So let's pretend, let's assume that we are in a hospital. Is, that, is there a specific place in the hospital where the ambulance service would need as a working area or give us an idea, how does this the work? The office is, uh, let me say, we have a crew room, what we call a crew room. A crew room. And then the office is uh, where administrative activities uh, are okay. supposed to take place. Okay. Now, if I mean uh, you have the office, um, you, you are certainly assured that any other uh, activity that you want to take can, I mean, can, can be, be undertaken. Okay. But uh, say you have only the ambulance, mm -hmm. that means that you always have to be on board the ambulance. Okay. And you will not have a working environment. Though the ambulance is the main component mm. of the, the mm. service, mm. but you certainly will need an, uh, an office facility where your documentation and other things will have to be okay. Uh, okay. kept. Okay, so will this be a big space a space that would need money to do or you think that looking at the way our, our hospitals are set up that they can create some space for you and that will well, I think work for, for a start for a start looking at uh, what i mean some of us have experienced i've taught uh, the western north mm -hmm. and realize that uh, actually we are resource constrained i'm not trying to be political here um, this is a known, it's a known secret. We Everybody are, knows. We are resource constrained, mm. and then you realize that they are doing their best. So if it, it is a, I mean, a one office space for the personnel to start with, at least if they go there, they can mm. uh, manage. They manage. Mm. You mm. understand? So that in the future we can now be talking of adding other facilities. Mm. One of the things that came to mind, I mean, when I was watching the program today, was the number of uh, paramedics, these are uh, they, they're paramedics, right? The number of them that we saw there, they're all going, are they all going with the ambulance? Are these people who already live in the constituencies who have been picked and trained? Or are these new people who have been trained who are now going to be posted? Let me say, I mean, because uh, we have increased the in number, mm -hmm. now we are going to have virtually new hands coming in. Mm. Uh, and let me you always use the case of Western North. Mm -hmm. It was only BBNA and CVU also. But now we're going to cover the remaining districts. Okay. So, that so there are that new people coming we'll in. We need more hands there. Okay. Are these new hands that you need part of those who were at the stadium at the Independence Square today who were commissioned together with the ambulance? Yes. So what's going to happen to these people? Is there? Do you have an idea? Does the um, service have an idea? where they will be staying, when they are going to the constituency, any, uh, anything? For a, for a start, I think the uh, MMDAs will take care of that. Okay. Because I think when all the ambulances go, we can't just say um, we are just bypassing the overlord, who is the minister. Mm. He also certainly will have to do something. So we'll go to the regional coordinating council pack them there, then the constituencies will also now come there. They will also do their own thing. So you can't say, oh, uh, because they are for constituencies, you are going to constituencies. Because the minister obviously has a role. The regional minister. The regional minister obviously has a role to also play. He's the overlord. No constituency. So what, this is going to be commissioned again in, the, in the different they have their in the own. Regions. They have their own thing. They have their own things to do. You understand? You have the districts, hmm. the district chief executives. They will take over. I see. Uh -huh. So they have their own environment. I mean, we don't ca have come in here. Okay. When they are done, then they say, oh, you come and take your ambulance, they will go for them. We'll wrap up this conversation, but let's hear from the president, uh, President Kufaldo, an excited president, I must say, today, who uh, launched uh, or commissioned these ambulances. He says that he talked about, you know, the previous... Um, um, purchase of ambulances that were declared not fit for purpose by the John Mahama administration. In fact, he criticizes this. He then announces the 112, uh, 122 emergency line for all emergencies. And he certainly says that his government is committed to delivering on their promises. Listen. Presents a right enshrined in our national constitution. However, this constitutional right can best materialize if we are able to guarantee the presence 
of pre-hospital emergency services in all parts of the country. With the National Ambulance Service having 130 stations and 10 regional control rooms across the country, it was sad to note that when I took office in January 2017, the service had only 55 semi-functioning ambulances. Indeed, the ambulance service started over 50 ambulances in 2006, and in 2018, 161 ambulances containing basic life support equipment were imported into the country. In December 2015, 200 ambulances were supposedly purchased by the Mahama government, out of which only 30 arrived in the country. As though this was not enough, the 30 were declared, quote, not fit for purpose because they had cardinal defects and did not come with any medical equipment, unquote. This was completely unacceptable and my government was determined to rectify this unhappy state of affairs. It is appropriate that the National Ambulance Service Established in the year 2004 under the new patriotic party-led government of that outstanding Ghanaian statesman, the second president of the Fourth Republic, His Excellency John Njikumbu, is re-equipped, retooled, and revamped under another MPP-led government. This time, of President Nana Abedakwa Akufuwa. I'm glad to be presenting to the Ministry of Health 307 brand new state-of-the-art ambulances fitted with advanced life support equipment and tracking devices to be distributed to 275 constituencies, that is one constituency, one ambulance, to be managed by the National Ambulance Service and the remainder of 32 ambulances to the headquarters of the service. As a result, this means that as against the scenario whereby one ambulance served approximately 524,000 people at the end of 20, December 2016, today we have a much improved ratio of one ambulance serving approximately 84,000 people. Additionally, in the course of the year, 145 new ambulance stations will be created, bringing the total to 275 stations, ensuring that we have a one constituency, one ambulance station situation. We promised in the 2016 MPP manifesto to strengthen the National Ambulance Service, and we're doing just that. Ladies and gentlemen, government is committed to ensuring the realization of an effective emergency medical service EMS system to help improve our country's emergency response capabilities. The simulation exercise undertaken a few months ago is proof of the preparedness and readiness of our emergency medical technicians through the efficient use of these ambulances to help save lives. Having augmented the fleet of the ambulance service, I'm aware of the other challenges confronting the service, such as inadequate staff, relatively non-existent dispatch system, the lack of a dedicated source of funding, and inadequate infrastructure, and the paramedic and emergency care training school. The only paramedic and emergency care training school in West Africa, located in the Kankasu, in the Ofensunas, North District of the Ashanti region. Government has already started work to address some of these challenges. Firstly, the Ministry of Finance 
has provided financial clarity for the National Ambulance Service to recruit and train 1,477 emergency medical technicians. Out of this number, 577 have already been recruited with the, program, the process for recruiting the remaining 900 underway. Secondly, the National Ambulance Service Bill, which identifies funding sources of the National Ambulance Service, is currently before cabinet. This will be forwarded to Parliament for consideration and enacted after cabinet approval, which will be granted shortly. Thank you. President Akufuado there talking about the ambulance service, you know, and his own commitment to getting this done. He talks about the one ambulance to 8,400 uh, people. And I'm just trying to find out from you. I mean, you've been within the service. What is the ideal ratio of an ambulance to how many people? In fact, um, elsewhere, um, you can have as many as five, ten in a constituency. Because um, if, we, if our country were that resource, mm. we would have even had a situation where I mean, you have uh, these commercial farmers. If when they go into farm, mm. we follow them to the um, farm for them to undertake their farming activities and then you follow them. So back. we still have a long way to go, essentially. Yes. But uh, uh, let, me, let me just add that mm. um, in, the, in Africa, this is the highest fleet that we have. Really? Yes. In Africa or in West in Africa? Africa? In Africa. I mean, I don't, I don't have yes. the, the figures to, to, to you, challenge you on that. If you if you go online, you can naturally. But Ghana, the yes, the, the, the three hundred plus, yes. uh, three hundred and six ambulances seven. that we have now, yes. three hundred and seven ambulances that we have now is the highest yes. fleet of any African country. Yes. Interesting. We'll look that up and see. But as the president says, one person is actually eighty-four thousand. So one ambulance to eighty-four thousand. Um, People, I take a very quick break, but I just want to, to 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 find out from you the simulation exercise that we saw today. Is that exactly how the ambulance is supposed to work on the ground? We call we, there was there were there were lots of people who were working in that ambulance. How many people work in an ambulance? Uh, normally, it's supposed to be three in an ambulance. In normal situation, now if you have uh, maybe say in, uh, a mass casualty situation. Mm -hmm. You can call in staffs um, who have a uh, sign of duty. Maybe okay. those who are home, okay. you can call on them to all come on okay. board so that you have the situation mm. taken care of. And, and all the ambulances have, are well fitted as the one you used in the simulation exercise today. They all have the same equipment yes, inside. The same equipment. Inside, inside all inside, of them. Inside. Interesting. You have any final words? Yes. Uh, I would just say um, we are grateful to the nation, especially the president and his government. At least um, this is a milestone. Okay. We, we are very happy. And then uh, as Oliver twice, we will lose one more. Certainly, you're asking for more. The president has indicated that there will be more ambulances to be bought uh, later. But, but as it stands now, one ambulance to 84,000 people. And we're even being told that this is a massive improvement on what other countries have. I've been talking to Ayana Musa Abdullah. He's the regional, he's from uh, the regional um, ambulance service, specifically from the Western North region. Thank you very much for coming.